Hello and welcome to another video by Perfect Scores. This is Preetinder Kaur and in this video we are going to start off with the different components of the eukaryotic cell and in the previous video I suppose you might have watched uh, what is the cell theory, what is a cell and what are the main differences between a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. And in the previous video we also described the prokaryotic cell structure in detail along with the ribosomes and the other bodies that are found in it. So in this one we are going to start off with the description of the components of the eukaryotic cell and the first one in front of us is the cell membrane. And before we get started don't forget to visit our website perfect-scores.com and if you have any suggestions or feedback you can mail them at perfectscores89 at the rate gmail.com. This is Preetinder Kaur and let us get started with the structure of the cell membrane. Now the cell membrane is a very minute and a very thin part of the entire cell. So it's obvious that the structure was uh, able to be studied only after the invention of the electron microscope that happened in the 1950s. Meanwhile, at that time, there were chemical studies that were being performed on the cell membrane, especially in the human blood cells, that is the RBCs, the red blood cells. That enabled the scientists to deduce the possible structure of the cell membrane that is also known as the plasma membrane. So both of, the, both of these terms, they actually mean the same thing. Now the studies that were done on the red blood cells, they showed that the cell membrane is composed of lipids and there is a bilayer. That means a lipid bilayer. As you can see over here, two layers. One is this one, the other one is this one. So the lipids are arranged in two, uh, two layers. And also the lipids are arranged with the polar head towards the outer side and the hydrophobic tail towards the inner part. So if this is a lipid, this is known as the head which is polar and this part is the hydrophobic tail which is always towards the inner side of the membrane. And I hope you can see over here it's arranged like this. So this is the lipid bilayer where the polar heads are towards the outside and the hydrophobic tails are towards the insides. This ensures that the non-polar tail of the saturated hydrocarbons that is not harmed by the aqueous environment of the cell. So remember, uh, the saturated hydrocarbons, they have a non-polar tail because it's hydrophobic. That means it does not like water. And it needs to be protected from the watery substances that are present outside the cell and within the cell. So that is why the tail is always faced in the opposite direction. So that is the basic reason. And the lipid component of the membrane, these lipids, these are actually composed of phosphoglycerides. So that is the main component of these lipids. And later lots of investigations were carried out and it was found that the cell membranes they not only contain these phosphoglycerides they also contain proteins which you can see over here in the form of these thread like structures but also carbohydrates which you can see here in the, stuck to the protein tail you have this sugar component which is basically a carbohydrate. Now the ratio of protein and lipid it varies in different cell types. In human beings, uh, the membrane of the red, red blood cells in human RBCs, the composition is 52% protein and 40% is lipids. So different variations are there in this ratio for the different cells that are found in animals. Now depending on the ease of extraction, the membrane proteins can be classified as integral or peripheral. Now the peripheral proteins as the name suggests they lie on the surface of the membrane and the integral ones they are either partially or totally buried in the membrane. 
and let's go through the diagram now so here you can see this is an integral protein that is buried partially and then this is a protein that is the peripheral one which is there only on the surface and then there is the carbohydrate that is the sugar that is attached to the protein and all these you can see these shapes here which is again partially buried that is also an integral protein and then you have certain molecules of cholesterol here 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 you can see these white colored substances this is all cholesterol and this layer that is formed this layer over here this is the lipid bilayer like this so i hope it's all clear how the diagram is supposed to be understood the lipid bilayer the peripheral and the integral proteins the cholesterol molecules within the lipids and the sugar as well now this uh, model that you can see in this figure this is known as the fluid mosaic model so that needs to be mentioned here fluid mosaic model and this was given by singer and nicholson here now according to this particular model the nature of lipid is quasi fluid so quasi fluid nature of lipid and it enables the lateral movement of proteins within the overall bilayer that means within this layer the proteins can move in this space that i've just highlighted this movement this ability to move that is known as the fluidity Now the fluid nature is also important because lots of other functions have to be performed like cell growth formation of intercellular junctions secretion of substances endocytosis cell division in all these factors so the cell membrane is actually very very important and one of the most important functions is transport of molecules across the cell membrane or the plasma membrane that is one very important function that it has to perform the membrane is selectively permeable to some molecules present on any one side of it now many molecules can briefly pass through the membrane without any requirement of energy that's called passive transport that means no energy is needed for the transport of those molecules and for example neutral solutes they can easily move across by just simple diffusion that is uh, by following the concentration gradient where concentration is more it moves from that place to the place where the concentration is lower same case can happen in case of water it can move across the membrane from higher to lower concentration now the movement of water by diffusion that is known as osmosis movement of water by diffusion as polar molecules they cannot move through this non polar bi lipid bilayer they need a carrier protein so the polar molecules they need a carrier protein and a few ions or molecules are actually transported across the membrane against concentration gradient few ions because uh, with the pressure with the concentration gradient it's actually easier but against the concentration gradient that needs energy and that energy is given by atp and that is known as active transport and we'll be doing that in detail later that is known as a sodium potassium pump so these ions they act and they help in which this atp molecules are also utilized and it depends on the utilization of energy because the ions have to be transported against the gradient so that is uh, the function of the cell membrane two kinds of transport are there passive 
which is in case of neutral solutes, water or any kind of molecule that is going with the direction of concentration gradient. And then there is active transport where energy is utilized because the transport is taking place against the concentration gradient. So that was all about the cell membrane. The next important structure which is only present in plant cells is the cell wall. It's a non-living structure, it's a rigid structure and not only in plants, it's also present in fungi. In fungi and plants, the cell wall, it gives shape, it protects the cell from any kind of shock or infection. It also helps in interaction within cells and gives a barrier to undesirable macromolecules. Now algae also they have a cell wall and in case of algae it is made up of lots of things like cellulose, of galactins, of manins and lots of minerals like calcium carbonate. And in other plants, it's made up of cellulose and it also has hemicellulose pectins and proteins. The cell wall of a young plant cell that's called a primary wall and that is capable of growth and this growth ability diminishes when the cell grows to the complete size and then that wall is known as a secondary wall. So every plant cell it starts with a primary cell wall that slowly matures into a secondary cell wall. And this one is formed towards the inner side that means towards the membrane. Now the middle lamella, it is a layer that is composed of calcium pectate, the middle between the cell wall and the membrane, the middle layer is known as the lamella and it is made up of calcium pectate which holds or glues or sticks the different neighboring cells together. The cell wall and the lamella can be transversed by uh, structures known as plasmodesmata, this middle layer and the cell wall. It can be transversed by plasmodesmata. And these are actually connecting the cytoplasm of the various different cells around the central cell. So that is all that you need to know about the cell wall and the next important thing that we need to do is the endomembrane system. And the endomembrane system is what is there inside the cell. Now the membranous organelles is different in terms of structure and function. Some of the organelles are part of the endomembrane system because of their coordinated functions. And this endomembrane system consists of the endoplasmic reticulum that you can see in this particular uh, slide. It has the Golgi apparatus. Let's just call it Golgi app, lysosomes, and vacuoles. So we'll be doing this one by one. And the functions of the other substances like mitochondria or chloroplasts, they are not coordinated with these components so these are not considered as part of the endomembrane system so the first thing that we are going to do is about the endoplasmic reticulum and this endoplasmic reticulum is nothing it's a structure it's a network of tiny tubular structures that are scattered in the cytoplasm so basically the ER it divides the intracellular space into two compartments And it helps in compartmentalization. Those two compartments are one is luminal. That means everything that is inside the reticulum. And the other one is extra luminal. That is everything outside the endoplasmic reticulum. Basically the cytoplasm. So this empty space that you can see over here. 
this one is going to be the luminal one and everything outside it is going to be extra luminal that is the cytoplasm now lots of times as you can see in this diagram there are ribosomes that are attached these white dot like structures so let me highlight these like this one or these structures these are the ribosomes and if the ribosomes are attached it's known as rough endoplasmic reticulum and in this case there are no ribosomes so it is known as a smooth endoplasmic reticulum now the rough endoplasmic reticulum is found in different areas the rough one is found in cells that are involved in protein synthesis because I hope you remember we did that ribosomes are involved in synthesis of proteins. So rough endoplasmic reticulum would be found where protein synthesis and secretion is there in those cells. And they are extensive and they are continuous with the outer membrane of the nucleus. The smooth one, the SER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, that is used for synthesis of lipids, which are fat molecules. And in animal cells, lipid-like hormones known as steroidal hormones, they are also produced in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So steroidal hormones in animals are also produced here in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So that is all about the ER, which is the first component of the endomembrane system. And the next component is the Golgi apparatus. So here is a diagram for that. So as the name suggests, it was found by Camillo Golgi, that is the person who observed these in the year 1898. And these are very uh, densely stained reticular structures near the nucleus. They were later named Golgi bodies after him. They consist of many disc-shaped flat cisternae. These are basically disc-shaped structures. And they are stacked parallel to one another. Different numbers of cisternae are present in a Golgi complex. They are concentrically arranged near the nucleus. So concentrically arranged near the nucleus. And they have a convex cis and a concave trans that are the two faces. So for these components, these discs, uh, two different phases are there. The concave one is known as the trans or the maturing phase while the convex one is known as the cis or the forming phase. And these two phases are completely different but they are interconnected. Now what is the function of the Golgi apparatus? It basically has the function of packaging materials. So packaging materials, that is one function. The materials that have to be delivered uh, outside the cell or within the cell. These materials have to be packaged in the form of vesicles. So the process, uh, let me just highlight the process. So that is the first thing. The materials that have to be packaged have to be packaged in the form of vesicles. They fuse with the cis phase. of this Golgi apparatus and then they move towards the trans phase. And this explains why the Golgi apparatus is very closely associated with the endoplasmic reticulum because materials, these, they are coming from the endoplasmic reticulums and they go to the Swiss phase and then they go to the trans phase and then wherever they have to go. Now lots of proteins that are synthesized by ribosomes on the rough ER, they are modified in the cisternae of the Golgi apparatus. So suppose it is coming from here, it has to reach here and at this place it gets modified. And additionally, the Golgi apparatus is also a very important site for the manufacture of glycoproteins and glycolipids. So that is all about the Golgi apparatus. The next important thing that you need to know about is the third part of the endomembrane system which is lysosomes. 
these are nothing but membrane bound vas vesicular structures so they have their own membrane So membrane bound vesicular structures and they are found and packaged in the Golgi apparatus. So packaged in the Golgi apparatus. The isolated lysosomal vesicles they are found in uh, they are found to be very rich in all types of hydrolytic enzymes. So, what kind of hydrolytic enzymes are present? Let's study that. It has hydrolysis, that means lipases for lipids, proteases for proteins, and carbohydrases for carbohydrates. And the maximum activity takes place when the pH is below 7, that means acidic pH. These enzymes can digest carbohydrates, proteins, lipids and even nucleic acids. So that is the function of these lysosomes and the fourth part of the endomembrane system is the vacuoles. Now vacuole is any membrane bound space found in the cytoplasm. So basically it's empty from inside. It contains water or sap or any other non-useful materials present in the cell. So the vacuole it has a single membrane known as a tonoplast. So that is the name of the membrane. And in plant cells, the vacuoles can have up to 90% of the cell volume, which we already saw in the previous video where we discussed the diagram of the plant cell. It has one big central vacuole. In plants, the tonoplast, it helps in transport of lots of things. So remember, plants have one single big vacuole and the tonoplast helps in transport of number of things, even against concentration of gradients against the direction of the concentration gradients. Transport of lots of materials. Hence the concentration of those materials is higher in the vacuole than in the cytoplasm. In amoeba, that is a special case, there is a substance known as contractile vacuole. Now this contractile vacuole it is used for excretion in case of amoeba. And in many cells, especially the protists, there are food vacuoles that are formed whenever food is engulfed from the surrounding environment. So that is all that you need to know about the vacuoles. And that is all that we'll be covering in this video because that's the first part of uh, the cell structure of eukaryotes. The remaining lots of other um, areas that is mitochondria or the nucleus or plastids we'll be covering in the next video so thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to visit this website for more videos and mail us any suggestions or feedback so thank you so much for watching this video